At one minute past eleven on the night of the 10th of March 2022, Zagreb, capital city of Croatia, was rocked by an explosion. An unidentified flying object struck the ground in the Yarun district, close to a student residential building at the university, creating a large crater, damaging over 40 cars parked nearby and waking up thousands of people. Fire and police were soon at the scene, and quickly discovered what looked like grey-painted aircraft parts among the debris. Further investigation the next day found a large parachute caught in trees nearby. The identity of the mystery plane was soon revealed. It was a huge, six-ton Soviet-era drone, and it had slammed into the ground at around 430 miles per hour, or 700 kilometers an hour, a bomb on board detonating on impact. The questions in Croatian officials' minds were numerous, but where had the drone come from, and who had fired this weapon at Croatia? And perhaps, most importantly, why hadn't NATO air defences in intervening nations not warned Croatia that the drone was coming? The drone was identified as a Tupolev Tu-141, that is to say the least very outdated technology in comparison with modern, state-of-the-art drones currently in service. It first flew in 1974 and entered Soviet Air Force service in 1979 until retired by them in 1989. Primarily a reconnaissance drone, the Tu-141 can carry film cameras, infrared images, EO images and imaging radar. It can also carry a bomb, turning it into a sort of modernised V-1 flying bomb. It is large, being over 14 metres or 47 feet long, with a wingspan of 3.88 metres or 12 foot 8.5 inches, and it weighs just over 6 tonnes. Its single KR-17A turbojet gives it a cruising speed of 1,000 kilometres an hour or 620 miles per hour, and it has a service ceiling of 6 kilometres or 19,700 feet with a 1,000 kilometre range. Designed to be reusable, the drone lands via a tail-mounted parachute system. As I said, this old drone was retired by the Soviet Union in 1989. However, in 2014, Ukraine brought this drone back into service during the war in Donbass, also using them as flying bombs. Working out who was responsible for this incident in a NATO member state as the war in Ukraine rages on was uppermost in the Croatian government's mind. Croatian investigations concluded that the Tu-141 had been armed with a 120 kilo explosive device when it crashed in Zagreb. The Tu-141 was first detected flying out of Ukraine into Romania at 11.23pm local time on the 10th of March, but it disappeared from Romanian territory three minutes later at 11.26, continuing on into Hungary. It is reported that Romanian air defences failed to identify the drone due to its high speed and low altitude, as well as adverse weather conditions at the time. Romania is at the forefront of NATO's build-up on the Ukraine border to guard NATO members against hostile Russian actions, and an aircraft this big and fast was surprisingly able to penetrate the nation's defences with ease hammering along at 430 miles per hour or 700 kilometers an hour at an altitude of 4,300 feet or 1,300 meters. Now in Hungarian airspace, this nation also failed to stop the Tu-141, despite the flying bomb being over Hungarian territory for 40 minutes. Croatian media reported that Hungary was keen to stay out of any war over Ukraine, and that accounted for its lack of response to what it saw as a provocative act. Hungary confirmed that it recorded the Tu-141 on radar, but launched no fighters to intercept it or shoot it down. The drone left Hungarian territory after 40 minutes, but Hungary apparently failed to warn Croatia that it was coming. Croatian military radar picked up the unidentified flying object at 23.23 hours Eastern European time and tracked it for seven minutes before it abruptly disappeared from their screens over Zagreb. They had no time to scramble fighters to investigate. The Croatian authorities were very angry, the Prime Minister pointing out how dangerous this incident could have been if the Tu-141 had struck one of the country's nuclear power stations, for example. 
As it was, it was a miracle people had not been killed or badly injured by the drone exploding in downtown Zagreb. So was this a malicious act or an accident? On the 15th of March, a Croatian Ministry of Defence source said that the investigation had concluded the Tu-141 belonged to Ukraine, the only country officially operating the type. Croatia said that the drone was armed and was probably fired at the Russians, but went off course, running out of fuel over Zagreb and crashing. So why had Romania and Hungary done nothing to try and stop this large target from transiting their airspace from an active war zone? The excuse given is that both nations had had false alarms in the days preceding the 10th of March, and when the real thing turned up on their radar screens, the operators thought it was a computer glitch. No one in Romania or Hungary reported the target up the NATO chain of command, so no military response was made. The Croatian Prime Minister complained by letter to the NATO Secretary General. The very obvious point raised by this incident, which appears to be an accident, is what could happen if Russia launched cruise missiles against NATO targets in Eastern Europe. If radar operators and NATO forces failed to respond to a large six-ton flying bomb of antiquated vintage, allowing it to fly through the protected airspaces of three NATO nations to strike a capital city, is the NATO defensive shield up to par? And the Tu-141 incident is not an isolated event. There have been at least four more penetrations of NATO's Eastern European defences, and at least two of them appear to be hostile, planned activities rather than accidents. The day after the Tu-141 crash, the 11th of March 2022, Hungarian radar picked up another unidentified flying object at noon. Saab Gripen fighters were this time scrambled from Ketchkemet Air Base to intercept, but by the time they arrived on the scene, the radar target had left Hungarian airspace. Later that afternoon, it happened again. Fighters were again scrambled, but found nothing. The target had left Hungarian airspace. What was causing these strange radar contacts was tentatively identified as Russian on the 14th of March, when a farmer found an intact Russian army Orlan 10 drone in a field 80 kilometers from the Ukrainian border at Bistrita Nazod County, northern Romania. The Orlan 10 is the size of a large model aeroplane. It weighs only 15 kilos, or 33 pounds, and it's powered by a single-cylinder, four-stroke petrol piston engine with a combat range of 87 miles, or 140 kilometers, and an endurance of 16 hours, up to a maximum ceiling of 16,000 feet, or 5,000 meters. It is equipped with cameras and various other instruments, and is launched by a folding catapult platform and lands by parachute. The example found in Romania had run out of fuel, indicating that unlike the drones recorded on Hungarian radar on the 11th of March, this example had malfunctioned. Whether it was on a mission inside Romania is unclear, or whether it malfunctioned over Ukraine and flew into Romania by accident, but the probability that all antennas were responsible for the two Hungarian unidentified flying object radar recordings on the 11th of March are high. Further proof that Russian army drones are entering NATO airspace has been provided by the Ukrainian military. Ukraine said that they destroyed a Russian drone that came to observe the consequences of a Russian aerial attack on Yavoriv military training base. Ukraine says that this drone was observed flying into Poland and then returned to Ukrainian airspace and was then shot down by them, indicating that Russian drones are entering NATO territory on reconnaissance missions. It is perfectly clear that some of these incidents are accidents caused by malfunctioning equipment, but that some bear the hallmarks of actual planned missions, which if true, must be a worry for NATO. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.